welcome back uh, to another long-awaited episode of the Swans Competition Preview. Um, hopefully, we'll maintain them now and be back for the long run. Obviously, had a lot of uh, external things going on, but Dan is here this week to um, talk to me about Sheffield Wednesday because that is our next game on Good Friday. So, welcome to the channel, Dan. How's it going, Luke? Thanks for having me, mate. That's all right. Obviously, we just recorded on your channel as well. So mm -hmm. if you can just maybe share where anyone who wants to see the flip version of this video um, can find that content. Any Anything with TWW cast or the Wednesday week, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, we've even dipped our toe into Twitch. But uh, with our youngest podcast member being about 33, it's, uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's, like, it's like the Americans with the metric system just just farting yeah. around the poo. I was I was considering having a look at trying to do some stuff on Twitch, but uh, we don't do a lot of our stuff live at the moment, so I need to try and work that out. But maybe it's something that we explore. I think there's definitely an avenue there, especially mm -hmm. if you can multi-stream to there and YouTube at the same time. You can. Yeah. Well, go check out the Wednesday week anyway, and obviously the the opposition, uh, sorry, the flip of this, where probably more of a Sheffield to Swansea perspective, and now we're going to do the reverse from a Swansea fan. Learn a little yeah. bit of what's going on in Sheffield Wednesday. So, um, obviously, got promoted from League One last season, and I think you know we as Swansea fans think we've had a bit of turmoil this season, and it's been a bit of a roller coaster. But I think it's fair to say you probably top us a little bit on that. Um, maybe you can just give us an overview or summary of how the season's gone and all the dramas that have come with it. God, I, I don't know where to start. So let's track back to the close season. We've just beat Peter Peter Brown. We just beat Barnsley in the uh, in the final. We got promoted back to where we should we should have got automatic promotion, but we kind of dropped our backside a bit in uh, in March and April this time last year. Actually, as it goes, uh, Darren Moore uh, parted company with the uh, with the with the club because just, let's let's be diplomatic about it couldn't agree terms with our uh, with our exalted leader chairman now our chairman has been in the news for all the wrong reasons over the uh, over the season but we'll get to that i assume at some point then we brought in to replace Darren Moore a a chap that used to manage Watford called Chisco Munoth who um who did get promoted to the Premier League with Watford. And I feel that that's probably what got him over the line in terms of uh, the interview process. Uh, we went through 10 games in the season, a couple of cup games, and we didn't win. Didn't win one. The only the only game that he won was uh, a cup game against Chesterfield uh, back in... Oh, God, it seems like so long ago. It could be, it could be August, could September. But, um, but yeah, we just didn't win. Uh, so we gave his marching orders. We had a game under... Um, under one of our coaches, and then we brought in uh, Danny Rule. Now, Danny Rule has been the number two at Bayern Munich, the number two for the German national squad. He also worked in the Premier League for Ralph Hassenhutl as uh, at Southampton as well. So, you know, he knows, you know, understands the the English mentality in the game whatsoever. And we ended up picking up a few wins. We ended up get, finally getting that monkey off our back and and getting a few wins. Um, October and November wasn't too bad. Lost a couple, but also won some last-minute ones that showed true character. Um, Christmas wasn't great. Christmas wasn't very fruitful. And then over the last seven games, we've won five of them. We even went on a four-game win streak, which we haven't done in since 2007. Um, so, you know, there's there's massive, massive improvement there, and the players are, are settling and, and finding their feet. Unfortunately, the last two games we've lost, uh, you know, one of them being an absolute spanking from Ipswich Town, 6-0. Um, but for some reason, we decided, I think it, I think Rule kind of looked at it as a bit of a free hit, given where they are in the season, and decided he wanted to try four at the back, whereas we've been playing three with two deep wing backs. Uh, he tried to play four at the back, and we got our backside handed to us, so I think we know what, you know, <laughs> that's the, I think that's like the fourth manager on the bounce that we've had that's tried to play four at the back and then realised it's not work. We don't really have the players for it and um, and decided it's a, to give it up as a bad experiment. So I can see three being at the back with two wing backs happening, uh, happening this Friday. So um, as it stands, we are still two points to, to get out of the re relegation uh, relegation spots but we were dead and buried we were dead and buried after the first third of the season we were done and the character and the you know the passion and the you know impressive tactics if, if you will to to from from the gaffer to, to climb back up and, and keep in with this party has been amazing but the the issue is that the teams that were down there with us like qpr huddersfield stoke they much to their testament, fair play to them. They've also been picking up a few wins. And so 
as a result, what we've ended up doing is dragging like another seven teams into the into the fight. And and, and as I've just said on our show, like I, I feel that you're just out of it. You're the you're the cutoff, as it were. So if if, if I look at the table, you've got you know Watford, Bristol City, Swansea down down to fifteenth, and then Millwall. 43 on 16th and then us on 38 in 23rd with with 10 games to play there's a lot of football could be played there there's a lot of teams that um that i think are buying in trouble that, uh, that blackburn namely they've not won in five minimum their their club's an absolute mess and i think they they could end up sleepwalking into relegation because they've got the toughest running i think as well yeah blackburn i know there's a i've, I've got Blackburn fan who's quite worried. I know when Birmingham as well struggling to pick up wins. Um, there's a couple of big teams that are struggling down there, really. And I know mm-hmm. you're saying we're out of it. I think maybe one more win. I know we've got 10 games to do it, which is probably in our favour. Um, mm-hmm. One more win, I think we should be okay. We have managed to pick a form up. But yeah, going back a couple of weeks ago, we were definitely in the thick of it as well. Um, but what I will say is, you were right. You are right. I think a lot of people did think you were dead and buried. Um, they were, I should have stats flying around earlier the season that you had the worst ever start to a championship yep. season in longest period of getting their first win. So the mm-hmm. fact that you are literally two, what one point clear of being out of the relegation zone, and it probably felt like you've been saying that for a couple of weeks based on your yeah. form picking up, and then just not managing to creep out because the teams who were in twenty first kept getting the win as well. I do feel for you a little bit because the form is not one of someone I should be down there right now, and. They're giving everything to try and get out, and I would love to see that happen because it would just be such a good feel-good story. And I think your manager, who's come in now, maybe would have a shout for manager of the year if you can get over the line. So fair if play. He pulls to it him. off. He's, he's going. We're going to yeah. give him the keys to the city, and he, he, he can have my missus. <laughs> well, that's a big statement. Um, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll revisit that and see at the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. Um, looking at your last eight games as well, you mentioned the. Uh, five wins. Three losses have only come against Leicester, Leeds and Ipswich. So mm-hmm. should Swansea be worried about your form? I I, I don't know. I don't know. We, we've not picked any any wins up, like you say, against against the big teams. And when we've lost, we've not looked like getting out of second gear. You know, it, it, that old, that age old adage of which, which insert team name is going to turn up on this day. You know what? What? What I can guarantee is that we're going to turn up and give it a go. Um, there was a, there was a point under Munoz at the start of the season that as soon as we conceded, heads were down. We were never going to come back. It was never going to. Th- th- there wasn't any fight, any any desire. And then there was one point where we played QPR and we scored. We scored something like two goals after ninety minutes to to win two one. So there's some fight and desire there that we've not had before. And with it being so far away, I'm I'm hoping that you know. Uh, fatigue, travel fatigue might kick in, just like Plymouth uh, for a lot of years seem to have had, where no one likes going down there, no one likes travelling all that way, and I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping Swansea might be a, a step, Swansea Sheffield might be a step too far for your lads. Uh, we've been in the league for a while now. I think we're used yeah, to travelling, and <clears throat> Swansea's quite. You've got to travel to go everywhere for our away games. Quite to be fair, and. Um, even when we were in the Premier League, you know, there wasn't really anyone that close to us in the Premier League. Birmingham clubs maybe the closest, but um, yeah. So I think the travelling, perhaps we're a bit used to it, unfortunately, for yourselves. But I don't want to eat my words, you know, famous last words and the rest of it. Uh, we, we luckily didn't have that many players away on international duty as well. Although, their disappointment, let's hope they can bounce back from it. But I don't think any of ours actually featured in the in the the last game so well that that's why you didn't beat Poland didn't it because no <laughs> well I mean there. Liam Cullen missed his penalty against Cardiff so maybe he was why he didn't come off the bench for for that maybe. but um yeah we'll uh we'll see we'll see what happens Friday so I know you mentioned the formation of the last game so I've gone back to mm-hmm. Leeds perhaps mm-hmm. as a more of a representative uh lineup and setup is that is a similar way that you think you'll set up against us when we make the trip up? Um, and is there any yeah. changes from that team potentially that we should be looking at? And the the only t- the only thing that tends to get tinkered around with is the is a defense a little bit, but they, they tend to be like for like swaps. There, there's going to be Beedling goal, a uh, young kid, nineteen years old. Um, got him on loan from Brighton, stole him from 
I think it was Cambridge or Oxford or one of those posh clubs that um, that he was on loan there and then they terminated loan and then came, came to us. And then we've got uh, Jamaican international Deshaun Bernard, who, who's played this weekend. Uh, so we, we may rest him. I, I don't know. But what, what I can probably guarantee is that we're going to play wing backs, that we're going to have Marvin Johnson down one side and uh, Paul Valentine down the other. Uh, Barry Bannon has been playing a bit more of a, a different role this year, we, we seem to have got a decent, a de- finally got a decent role for him by sticking two defensive midfielders behind him in uh, one of them being Will Volks, who seems to be having a great season right now. And then up front, we've got um, we've got Jan Paveda that we've had on loan from Leeds, who is a sublime player, but uh, picked up a knock and ended up dropping out of international duty for Colombia. So we don't know. We're a bit touch and go whether he's going to play. Uh, we've got Jedi Kasama uh, that we that's played on the same pitch as Lionel Messi. <laughs> Albeit, you know, at a very low level, like you know what I mean. It, he was there at PSG when Messi was there, and then, uh, and then up front we've got uh, Ek Ugbo and his uh, and his old Cardiff pal um, uh, Masaba. Not Cardiff pal. They they played in Belgium together. Sorry, and we've got Ugbo from Cardiff. Sorry. Um, so Ugbo managed to find a bit of scoring form during that period when we did when we did pick up some points. So uh, hopefully he can uh, pick up where we left off. Uh, Will Vokes would have been his Cardiff pal, wouldn't he? When you, <laughs> I think, I think, uh, I think Volks was long gone by the time uh, by the time Ugbo was there. And I don't believe Ugbo had the best of times there either, did he? But mm. he's picked up a bit uh, since he's come to yourselves. And I've got a I got a Cardiff uh, fan who I work with who was rather disappointed to see that he's all of a sudden started scoring <laughs> because he couldn't seem meant- to do that before. Yeah, it, it all depends on the uh, on the type of football you're playing because, like we, you know, we're 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 starting to do that football where we're smashing to the byline and cutting back. And Ugbo's really good at making it like he's going to go tearing onto the byline to, to poke it in. But he just slows his run, takes a step back, and he's always on the edge of the six to sweep it in. It's actually really impressive what he does. But if you're not playing that football, then he's going to be quite useless. And I mm. uh, and I feel like Cardiff might not have been doing what, what he needs them to do, if that makes sense. Some moves work out, some don't. You look at Lee Trundle going to Bristol City, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And Leon Britton as well. He left to go mm. to your uh, noisy neighbours and that didn't work out and he came back within six months. So, <laughs> um, But yeah, okay. So you've mentioned a lot of the players that we expect to see. Is it fair to say that Barry Bannon is the main man there or is it someone else we should be looking out for? Barry Bannon's been the main main man there for eight years. You know, he's our, he's our club captain, you know, one of the most technically gifted footballers I've seen at Hillsborough in a lot of years. And that's including, you know, anything after Paolo Di Canio or Benito Carboni, to be fair. Um, but, you know, he's, he's not a young kid anymore and we can't rely on him and we need to start thinking about life after Barry Bannon. But at the meantime, uh, when it comes to fight, desire and personality, he's he's the guy that's going to carry us through. The issue is that because he's so good, <clears throat> if he has a game where he's only scored a 6.5 out of, out of 10, everybody's on his back with, bloody hell, Barry Bannon will be rubbish. Um but I, I, you know, I kind of want to look forward. I think Perveda, if Perveda plays, is going to cause some damage because that that kid's got a, a career in front of him, and the fact that he's fourth choice in attacking midfielder position for Leeds just show shows to me how good Leeds are in terms of their squad depth. Yeah, um, I think you you said what you said about Barry Bannon is quite similar to Mac Rimes. Maybe uh, mm. he gets a six point five. He gets all the critics, but like he very rarely gets six point five. You know, so it's um, yeah very important part of our team as well. And <clears throat> I thought it was quite interesting. You mentioned your goalkeeper, James Beadle, is from mm-hmm. Brighton uh, mm-hmm. Youth Academy. But so is our goalkeeper, Carl Rushworth. So could label this one as the battle of the Brighton youth keepers. Um, Big, strong would, Brighton boys. That's what Yeah, let's, let's see which one is made of uh, made of first team quality for the Premier League, is it? Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, but our one looks like the Joker without the makeup on. You should see him. All right, right old gangly kid he is, bless him. <laughs> How old is your one? How old is uh, Peter? Uh, 19. He's a, he's a young, oh, okay. young kid. So he's probably like the the period or two under Rushworth, I think. Maybe we've got the yeah. one that's a bit further along the conveyor belt. But um, Rushworth mm-hmm. has been really impressive for the Swans since he's been here. But I think Brighton are just... They seem to be turning out some good quality players down there. So, um, I mean, one that's doing the rounds at the moment, Victor Giocarez, who didn't yeah. have the best time on loan of Swansea, being touted for like very high, near hundred million pound moves to Man United and other big clubs. So that's nuts to think that he couldn't get in the team 
in a six month uh, spell here but four years ago. I know he's that price, like one that got away for sure. But um, it's what happens in football, isn't it? Um, another player I wanted to mention before we maybe start wrapping up. Uh, not one of your players anymore, but George Byers left in January. So what's the story mm. there? I was surprised. I thought he was quite a decent part of the midfield. By Byers, Volks and Bannon in the middle of the park during that 23-game unbeaten streak that we had in League One were sublime. They were the absolute key to it. Uh, since we got into the championship, Byers just hasn't been able to find any form. It, it, it's genuinely really sad. He's a, he's a crowd favourite. We all love him, and um, and you know there's a there's an element of seeing him go to another club and playing in in, in a different strip and wearing different colours. It's actually quite sad, uh, but we understand it. And you know everybody online, you know you know what the internet is like when it comes to dishing out feedback. Um, he's it's, it's been quite nice. And uh, and I hope he's gone there, and I hope he does well, and I hope he comes back and kicks the back sh- back doors out of it and makes that makes that shirt his own. If we're still in this league, because he's I, gone I, on I, loan, I, has he? Yeah, he's he's only gone on loan, so I hope he comes back with a bit of um, with a bit a bit of bollocks about him because I I liked him, I liked him, and he's clearly a popular member of the team. You know, uh, you can you can hear, you can really taste in the air. I, if if you don't get on with Barry Bannon and you're not in the clique, then you're out of the gang. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, and By- Byers was well in that, but he, he does need to go and get some um, get some good game time underneath him, and he just wasn't getting that. He had a bit of a a, a shitty injury uh, towards the back. Well, when our form dropped off, actually around March and April, back end of last year. So if he can if he can kind of get that back, then uh, I'd be happy to see him succeed. Yeah, obviously someone that came to the Swansea Youth Academy to make into the first team, mm. and I was quite. Got it when he left us as well. Same sort of feeling, but he wasn't really playing. He's struggling to come back from injuries, which is the reason he fell out of the team. Because when he first came in and um, he was getting picked, he was starting all the time, had a big long injury. And then he just he came back from his injury, didn't really have that much time to get back into the squad and he was gone. So, um, yeah, a bit of a sad one. I think he's got quality. He's definitely quite technical. And maybe it's the injury stuff that kind of holds him back, I think, sometimes and stops him maintaining long periods of form. But um, hopefully it can work out for him and you get to see the best of him once again. Um, OK, let's let's close it off then with how do you think you see this game going? Um, I've got two parts to this. i got one part where who do you think from Swansea's team maybe it worries you the most in terms of who can do damage to you? And then, what do you think uh, the score is going to be, and how it's going to play out? Who's that? Who's that kid you've got at the back? The one that uh, you, you you've got. Um, I want to say he's a defender. Uh, is it? I'll have a look in a second. Do you know what? I'm just going to Google it while I while I while I've got you right now because I I, I earmarked him earlier on and thought this is the keys I kind of want to keep. We need to try and nullify a little bit. Um, it was Norton, obviously. Oh yeah. And then, as you just said on on our show, that Darling and Wood have played played quite well against um, against Cardiff. I watched that game, and it looked so assured at the back. It was actually uh, it was actually impressive impressive to watch. Uh, in terms of what we're going to do, I think there's an air of necess- necessity around us trying to. Unfortunately, if we, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful, but you're in that band of clubs in yeah. the league that we have to get points against, and. The Hillsborough crowd won't have it if we don't come out all guns blazing. I think it's got the potential to to either you you winning one nil or us beating you two nil to yeah. to get splinters on my ass. Yeah, well I said in yours as well, didn't I? I said two one. Um mm. because I don't know if we'll keep a clean sheet two games in a row. Uh we struggled. We only had seven all season, I think. But watching the way you deal. defended against watching the way you defend uh, against it's a different, it's, it's an anomaly game though, isn't it? You've got to take that one out of the picture when yeah. it comes to looking at the season. There was a lot more at play there and a lot more context to rile up the, the, the team and get the performance out of them, you know. So they were all switched on for 90 minutes and that extra adrenaline kind of overdid any of the maybe stuff that happens usually where we fizzle out at the end of games maybe fitness or whatever mm-hmm. it is but the crowd being so up for it you know like it's a derby and a massive game for us and hopefully we can maintain that going forward but I haven't seen enough for a longer sample size to think that's still not an issue so we seem to go out go out on top and dominate the games at the start keep the ball really well make some chances but don't take enough of them and going mm-hmm. into the second half then we seem, seem to that that isn't as much 
and the other team comes into it a bit, especially going away. So um, if we're 1-0 up or something and you feel like you can get into the game in the second half, you'll probably come into it. Or if it's 0-0 and it only takes one goal to win it as well, we'll probably get a bit edgy. But um, that seems to be what's happening. Um, so, yeah, mm. we'll see what happens anyway. But thanks for your input. One last question, funny one off football related to end on. I like to ask, what is everyone's favourite football scran that you ever had at a stadium? Oh God, this is, I'm going to get pelters in South Yorkshire. Uh, when I was a, uh, when I was a kid, if Sheffield Wednesday weren't playing um, at home and Leeds weren't playing at home, uh, my dad and I would go and we'd, we'd agree on going to watch Rotherham United. It's like you and your dad supporting different teams are going to watch Newport, for example, right? Yeah. And, and we used to go and watch Rotherham and I was always enamored by their pies. I don't know what they did at Rotherham to them, but they're still very good. They're still excellent. So, um, what flavor? Oh, it's it's got to be minced beef every time. Mince minced beef every time. You can't you can't piss about when it comes to a good pie. Go and try a pie next time we go to Rotherham away and uh, see what it's all about. Then, thank you for right. coming on, Dan, and remind everyone where they can find your content uh, at TWWcast on uh, all of them, all of yeah. them, even TikTok. And Twitch, you said you'd get into as well. Yeah, yeah. So go check Doing that, that out. Um, go check that out for, obviously, we've got a preview ahead of this game. I'm sure you'll discuss afterwards as well, and just to see what's mm-hmm. going on in Sheffield Wednesday. But thank you very much for coming on. I know you've got to shoot off to go and do other commitments. So thank you very much, and we shall hopefully speak to you again next season. Let's hope. Hopefully so. Thank you very much.